Hello and welcome to SCM's new short clip video series. My name is Ole Carstensen and in this week's video I will explain and showcase how to simulate the mechanical properties of thermoset polymers from molecular dynamic simulations. If you're watching this on YouTube, have a look at the video description. There you can not only find all the input files for the simulations, but also useful information regarding a trial of our software or this video series. Throughout this video, I will be using the reactive force field REXFF, which is part of the Amsterdam modeling suite to demonstrate how one can use an atomistic epoxy polymer model to simulate mechanical properties such as Young's modulus or the yield point. How to create such a model is an interesting challenge in itself that we have already dealt with in video number two of this video series. Make sure to have a look and learn how to create individual polymer models in that video. The video is based on SCM's advanced online tutorial called Mechanical Properties of Epoxy Polymers, which itself is based on the workflows provided in these two papers. Both of them are highly recommended reads for anyone interested in atomistic thermoset polymer simulations. This is the polymer used throughout this video. It was built from the tetrafunctional resin epoxy TGDDM using DATDA as a hardener. The following cross-linking reaction was used to create the polymer structure. The structure will now be strained by an uniaxial strain, which means that we will gradually stretch one of the lattice vectors while we allow the remaining two vectors to relax. By allowing the other lattice vectors to relax, we will be able to simulate an approximate Poisson ratio as well. The polymer system will experience stress due to the strain, and this stress is calculated as the per-atom stress tensor according to the paper by Thompson and Plimpton. Details of this procedure are found in the above literature reference and of course also in our online ReXFF documentation. Let's have a look at the input file provided in the video description to see how this translates into a ReXFF input file. We use the same dispersion corrected force field as in our online tutorial. The total simulation time will be 2 million steps with a time step of 0.25 femtoseconds. This will result in a simulation of 500,000 femtoseconds or half a nanosecond which is quite a long simulation time. It will probably run for one or two days with the actual number depending on the hardware, of course. We simulate an NPT ensemble with a simple Behrensen thermostat and barostat. This means we set up a barostat that will manipulate the lattice vectors to try and match the requirement of a constant pressure. That's what the P in NPT stands for. The barostat will take care of the Poisson contractions while we are slowly straining the system more and more. The temperature and pressure are then both set to ambient conditions with 300K and 0 0.101 MPa. The damping constant of the barostat is of importance in such simulations as it determines the rate at which the barostat is interacting with the lattice vectors. For now we use the literature value here, but it might be worthwhile to try and adjust the rate a bit or even try a different barostat altogether. The calculation of the stress is then activated by selecting it from the drop-down menu below. Stress energy. The strain rate is defined as change per iteration. You can find the according entry under model volume regimes. Here we request a change of the A lattice vector by a value of 1.9 times 10 to the power of minus 6 angstrom per iteration. To calculate the per iteration strain, start from the desired strain rate. In this case, the desired strain rate is 2 times 10 to the power of minus 8 per second. The length of the lattice vectors can be found under model lattice vectors in ADF input. Here the A vector has a length of 37.6 angstrom, so the change in angstrom per femtosecond becomes 7.52 times 10 to the power of minus 6. 
And since the simulation time step is 0 0.25 femtoseconds and not 1 femtoseconds, this has to be divided by a factor of 4 to yield a per iteration change of 1.9 times 10 to the power of minus 6, exactly as we see in ADF input. Now we almost completed the setup. Only two more things need to be requested. We go to details, molecular dynamics. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to tell the barostat to ignore the A lattice vector, because that is the one that we are going to strain. And second, we need to lower the frame rate. The frame rate marks the rate at which the geometry is safe during the simulation. A high frame rate will result in a high resolution trajectory movie, but it will also generate huge files and slow down the simulation noticeably. In our case, writing the geometry and the stress every 2000 iterations is enough. Now we can save and run the calculation. Once the calculation has finished, we can inspect the trajectory in ADF movie. Honestly, the movie is not that spectacular. The system was not strained until it breaks. Instead, we just about strained enough to sample data outside the elastic response, as you soon will see. Here's a fast forward of the trajectory movie to illustrate the applied strain. Since the trajectory file is big, it's best to extract the required data from the output file. The amount of data becomes much smaller and can conveniently be handled then. To extract the data, we use a small Python script. The link to the script can be found in the video description. Once you downloaded the script, place it in the results folder where your trajectory file with the extension rxkf is located. To execute the script, we have to call the Python interpreter of the AMPS modeling suite. Start by opening up a command line, go to help command line, and type in sh to bring up a minimal Linux-like shell environment. Now to call the Python interpreter, we type start Python. You can use, comma, you can use tab completion then the name of the script, stress underscore strain curve dot pi, and the name of the trajectory file. So tap, tap key to show the contents of the directory, tgddm2 underscore strain underscore x dot rxkf and hit enter to start the analysis. The stress strain curve is written to a file called stress strain curve.csv. In this results file, you will find the x, y, and z strain in the first three columns and the x, y, and z stress in the last three columns. It can be plotted with any plotting software, for example, GNUplot, Origin, or QTI plot. To calculate the mechanical properties from the raw data, we follow the approach outlined in the Odegaard paper. First, we smoothen the curve by calculating a moving window average. In this case, 200 frames were used for the averaging. With the help of the moving window average, we can identify the small strain regime characterized by a linear stress response of the system. In this case, this is true for a strain of up to roughly 0.03. A linear fit to the small strain regime will now provide us with Young's modulus. It's simply the slope of the fit curve. The yield point is then found as the intersection between the moving window average curve, that's the blue line we have calculated earlier, and a 
0.2% offset line of the linear fit we did for the Young's modulus. Poisson's ratio is obtained from the ratio of transverse and uniaxial strains. Those can be found in the first two columns of the output file generated by the script. For example, if the system was strained along the y-axis, you would plot each column 1 and column 3 against column 2. The system is amorphous, so we can average the two values to obtain a Poisson's ratio of 0.37 for this case. In order to obtain meaningful results of such simulations, it is advised to always run several different polymer structures, each strained along each lattice vector and then average the results. With this, I would like to conclude my demonstration. I hope I could provide some insight into the simulation of mechanical properties via atomistic simulations, and I'm happy to answer any questions, be it in a live chat or in later video comments. Make sure to check the video description for all the material and resources shown in this video. And if you're interested in other materials modeling related video overviews, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always be up to date.